Hello and welcome to Mentor at ITC. My name is Geir Eide and in this video I'm going to show you our new no compromise approach to DFT, the Tessent Streaming Scan Network. First, let's review some of the challenges uh, we see in SOC designs today. Uh, the most common way of connecting uh, core level scan channels to chip level pins is through what we call a pen muxed approach, where a mux network decides which cores that are directly connected to the chip level pins. This is straightforward for a small design like this, but when uh, the number of cores grows and when the complexity of the cores grows and when we get multiple levels of cores, this becomes uh, more and more complex and uh, in sometimes suboptimal. And the reason for that is a lot of the constraints that we have to deal with. Uh, for example, how many cores you can test concurrently is determined by how many IOs you have available for a scan test. Also, which cores that are tested concurrently or which cores can be tested concurrently is a hardwired decision. It's something you have to decide during the sign process. Uh, there's also dependencies uh, related to the number of channels at core level. Uh, and that also, again, determines which course you can, can test in parallel. And now you can build in some more flexibility in, in this approach with a more complex MUX network, but that also increases the, the potential for, for routing congestion related to uh, routing all of the scan channels all across the design. Um, now, there are also different ways you can, you can deal with this. Now, you can implement what we call a, a bottom-up uh, flow where you allocate a fixed number of scan channels like early in the flow. Uh, let's say you decide to have the same number of scan channels for all of the cores uh, and kind of make a lot of decisions early. That's the easiest approach, the, the least effort. Uh, but a side effect of that, you might end up wasting bandwidth uh, because the different cores that you group together end up having different scan chain length or different pattern count. Now you can address that then by reallocating the scan ch resources, for instance, allocating fewer uh, scan channels to the cores that require less data. But that means reconfiguring compression, rerouting the scan channels, regenerating patterns, and this is a lot of effort. Uh, so you're, you're dealing often with a, uh, have to make a compromise between effort and test time. Um, furthermore, we also see that the PINMUX approach uh, is not very effective when we deal with large numbers of identical cores. Uh, you can broadcast uh, scan inputs to multiple cores, but typically have to observe all of the scan, uh, the scan outputs for all of the cores. And there's also some challenges associated with multiple different pipeline stages, different number of pipelines for the different cores. Um, the throughput also is determined by the core shift speed. So even though you have a tester that can operate at a higher frequency, and even though your IOs can operate at a higher frequency, your shift speed is uh, limited by what the course can handle. And we, as we see more designs uh, using a tiled uh, approach, uh, tiles with, with abutment where you don't have this top level uh, routing layer, uh, it becomes even more challenging to route, route scan resources to the various cores because you have to go through one core to get access to the next. Tessent Streaming Scan Network, or SSN, is a new approach to distribute scan test data across an SOC. In this example, we see a design with six cores and an SSN bus. The SSN bus is a high-speed synchronous bus to deliver packetized scan test data to the cores. Part of the SSN network is a 
in what we call a host node in each core. This host node ensures that the right data is picked up from the SSN bus and sent to the scan inputs of the core, could be compressed, uncompressed, or a combination of both, and also ensures that the scan output data is uh, placed back onto the bus. The host nodes also generate the DFT signals locally, scan enable, scan clock, and so forth. Each node knows what to do and when to do it based on a simple configuration step that's done over IJTAG. This means that uh, the groupings of which cores are tested uh, together and which cores are tested sequentially, which cores are active, these decisions are not hardwired. They are fully configurable. Uh, the configuration is done as, as a setup step, uh, uh, one, a one-time setup step per pattern set. Once the setup is done, all the data on the SSN bus is payload. The fundamental principle behind SSN is that core level and chip level DFT is decoupled. What that means is that the number of scan channels per core is completely independent of the width of the SSN bus and as well as the number of scan channels at, at the chip level and also independent of all the other cores in the design. This means that uh, that simp dramatically simplifies the, the planning and, and implementation effort. And it also allows you to make uh, grouping and other decisions at retargeting time rather than design time. This architecture is very flexible. Uh, the bus width is typically determined by the number of uh, pins, uh, scan channel pins available. It could be as narrow as one bit. This architecture also eases routing and time enclosure since we eliminate the top level test mode muxing. And it is also fully compatible with tile based designs with abutment since no top level uh, signals have to be, have to be routed. Um, SSN also contains many uh, capabilities that help optimize test time and test data volume uh, without having to increase the DFT or planning effort. Uh, SSN has capabilities to automatically tune how much data is, is sent to each core to help reduce the white space in the test data and also has uh, a capability to test multiple identical cores at, at constant cost while still have uh, diagnosis support. And SSN is also proven in silicon. So how does SSN work? Let's take a closer look at the concept of packets and packetized scan test data delivery. In this little example, we have a design with two cores, core A and core B. Core A has five scan channels and core B has four scan channels, four inputs, four outputs. Now a packet is defined as the total amount of data that is needed to perform one shift cycle across all of the cores that are tested concurrently. So since we are testing both core A and core B, the packet size in this example is nine bits. Now at the same time, notice that the SSM bus width is eight bits. And remember that the width of the SSM bus is typically defined by the number of pins available for test, completely independent of number of scan channels per core. Now on the left side of the slide here, we see how data is streamed through the bus, through the synchronous SSM bus. 
Um, now let's take a closer look at the first packet. Again, notice that to deliver all of the data corresponding to that packet, we need two cycles. Uh, and the first SSN bus cycle, uh, we see that uh, we are able to deliver all of the data needed to perform one shift cycle for core A, all the five bits needed. And so after that first SSN bus cycle, we can shift core A. But core B has to wait because it's the rest of the data, all of the data needed to test core B isn't available until we have, uh, we're at the second SSN clock cycle. And the uh, SSN host, the host nodes, then know exactly uh, where the data corresponding to, to that particular core is on the bus and also when to pulse the, the shift clock. Now, if we look at the next packet, notice that the positions now are, are shifted, are rotated. Again, this happens because we are able to you know, fully utilize, uh, pack all the data uh, together. And um, also now, since we have nine bits per packet and eight bit bus, that's why we, we see this rotation. So on the, uh, like the bottom row here, uh, notice that uh, the first bit for core A in the, uh, in the first packet, it was on the very bottom. Now it has, it has shifted for the, for the second packet. So this rotation will continue uh, packet after packet. And the same slots that we used for the scan input data is also used for scan output uh, data uh, uh, captured uh, from the core and put back on the bus again, delayed by two packets. So in a nutshell, this is how packetized data delivery works with SSN and how the width of the SSN bus is completely independent of the width of the course. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, SSN contains several uh, capabilities that help reduce test time and test data volume. Um, one uh, capability is what we call independent shift and capture. Now in many uh, retargeting schemes, PINMOX approaches, uh, the capture has to be aligned. What that means is that if we are shifting in uh, multiple cores concurrently, and these have a uh, different scan length, um, we have to still, we have to pad some of the cores with the shorter chains and then perform capture at the same time. Uh, with SSN, uh, we can, uh, we also do support aligned capture, but SSN in, uh, when we're testing the course independently, uh, the DFT signals are generated locally and we, uh, the uh, capture uh, is independent across the different cores. And this allows us uh, to have a more optimal uh, pattern set. SSN also has uh, bandwidth tuning. Um, what bandwidth tuning is, is to rather than uh, shifting uh, as many bits as there are scan channels per uh, per packet uh, to allocate fewer bits per packet to the cores that require less data. What that means is that a for a core that let's say has fewer uh, requires fewer uh, fewer patterns, we allocate less uh, less uh, data per packet. And, and that way we're able to tune the bandwidth and optimize the uh, test time for the design. SSN provides a scalable method for testing any number of identical cores with a constant amount of test data at a constant test time. Um, for uh, identical cores, the uh, compare circuitry is included in each 
host node. Um, the data that is provided to the identical cores is the scan input data, expect data, and mask data. That uh, allows uh, SSN to do the comparison inside each course. The accumulated status is then shifted out on the SSN bus. This is the accumulated status across all of the identical course. And a pass-fail uh, bit per core is also captured in the, uh, in the host and scanned out through IJ tag. We have several resources for you if you want to learn more about SSN here at ITC. In our booth, you will find collateral such as a white paper and data sheet. Uh, we also invite you to attend our ITC Diamond Supporter presentation, where uh, Mentor, along with some of our partners, present the SSN technology and also case studies. Last but not least, we invite you to attend a technical pres uh, presentation, a technical paper that covers both SSN and the case study in much more detail. Uh, this paper is presented in session uh, 6B on Thursday at 1.20 p.m. Thank you for your time. We hope that you will consider the silicon-proven SSN technology to reduce your DFT planning and implementation time and also reduce your test time and volume. Thank you very much.